Um, I will be briefly presenting and summarizing the results of our pulmonary embolism thrombolysis trial, uh, which we presented today. So acute pulmonary embolism is the third most frequent acute cardiovascular syndrome after ACS and stroke, or stroke and ACS, depending on which country you're in. Uh, so it is a frequent disease with a prevalence of about 180 to 100 cases uh, per 100,000 populations, and uh, it is estimated that in the U.S. there are at least 100,000 deaths annually from this disease. Uh, this disease is not fatal for everybody. Fortunately, it has a very wide spectrum of severity. There are some patients who are not sick or not very sick and have an excellent prognosis if they treat, uh, are treated with anticoagulant drugs. Uh, but there are some other patients who are, have very low blood pressure, so they have a circulatory collapse at the beginning, and these are patients with a bad prognosis. And there is a gray area in the middle, so it's those patients who come in with normal blood pressure, you think they are quite stable, but there is some evidence that their right heart chamber is not okay, so this, these patients are, have probably imminent collapse. Uh, and this may be up to 15, 20 percent of patients with PE, uh, depending on how you define them. So this patient population until now has been treated with heparin alone, and this has been considered sufficient. But there has been, a, it has been hypothesized, it has been presumed that uh, probably they may need something more urgent. They may need more advanced treatments, such as thrombolytic drugs, clot-busting drugs, to prevent them for going, from going into shock. The data on that have been very sparse until now, so we uh, designed a conducted a large trial, an investigator-initiated, investigator-sponsored trial, uh, the, the PYTHO study. PYTHO is, uh, by the way, uh, the name of the Greek goddess of persuasion. Uh, so this study was conducted in 13 countries in Europe, uh, plus Israel and uh, had as its objective to test whether thrombolysis, so the injection of a clot-busting clot drug in addition to anticoagulation with heparin would, be, would improve the prognosis of these patients, would improve the outcome. Uh, the study uh, was conducted between the end of 2007 and mid-2012. Overall, this was a very long project from its uh, conception to its initiation and termination. And ultimately, the study um, included 1,006 patients. These were quite old patients with PE. Uh, with the, the, the age was the mean age was about uh, was a little less than 70 years. So this is not a healthy young population. These are really sick people. And uh, the main results of the study are that we found uh, that our hypothesis was confirmed. That means uh, the endpoint of death or collapse within seven days of assignment to the study drug was reduced from 5.6% in the group that received placebo to 2.6% in the group that received the clot-busting drug. So this is a reduction by about 58%, uh, and this was significant. So uh, thrombolysis appeared to prevent Death, from death or hemodynamic collapse in these patients and many of the complications that might have resulted in, in death if not treated uh, promptly. Uh, this, was the, uh, this was one part of the, um, of the results. And with regard to safety, of course, uh, the study confirmed what we know also from previous thrombolysis studies. This is, these are, of course, very active drugs. They may cause bleeding. We knew that, and this was confirmed by this large trial. I would like to say here that PYTHO is by far uh, larger than all uh, uh, other thrombolysis trials ever performed combined. So this was really, for this type of disease, a very large population. And we did find that uh, major bleeds, as we call them, uh, were increased in the group of thrombolysis. So there was a cost to pay. It was between, it was, uh, between 6.8 and uh, um, one percent, that was the difference, so it was uh, more bleeding in the certain ectoplase group. And we also found that uh, strokes, hemorrhagic strokes, so intracranial bleeds, were increased in the thrombolytic group. Uh, group. There was a two 
um, percent bleeding rate in the head in patients who receive thrombolysis. And this is more or less in line what we know with what we know from previous studies with thrombolytic drugs. So this is the risk we have to, to take into consideration when we are giving this type of therapy. I would like to, to remind again that despite these bleeding complications, the number of deaths tended to be lower in the thrombolytic versus placebo group. We had only six death cases in the thrombolytic group. We had nine deaths in the placebo group. Uh, this was not a significant difference, but the study, as I said in the beginning, was not designed to test mortality as an endpoint. This would have required huge numbers of patients. This would not have been feasible. It, was, it included also hemodynamic collapse. And finally, um, a thing, an aspect which is in our mind important, and we continue to work on this, we try to identify which subgroups of patients might particularly benefit from thrombolysis within this whole population, and which patients may also have a lower risk of bleeding. Um, there are no accepted scores for bleeding risk in pulmonary embolism patients. Unfortunately, in contrast to SPAP, to atrial fibrillation patients, we, we have a deficit here as a PE community. Uh, our predefined uh, subgroups were uh, primarily according to age, so we divided between patients who were 75 or younger and patients who were, 75, who were older than 75. And we found that in the younger patients, we had a large reduction by 67% of the primary endpoint. So we, we reduced the risk of, of death or a hemodynamic collapse at a 1.1% of stroke, so which appears to be more much more favorable than the whole population. Whereas in the older patients, we also had some reduction in the primary endpoint. This was much less. It was by 37%, and the risk of stroke was almost uh, 2%. So our conclusions for this trial were that first, that it makes sense to risk stratify, as we say, PE patients. That means to find among patients who are not unstable at presentations to try to find those patients that may have an increased risk. So with echo, with CT, with biomarkers, try to find who is at risk of imminent collapse that we do need to recanalize those patients because otherwise they will go into shock. Um, there is a price to pay for full systemic thrombolysis, so certainly we could not say without any reservations everybody in this group should now receive thrombolysis. Uh, we, we will have to look further for particular subgroups uh, that may benefit most, and our results uh, suggest that age may be such a very important factor. Very much, Dr. Call. Would you care to take the podium? I think it's uh, okay. Good morning. Uh, my name is Sanjay Call. Um, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Constantinides and his uh, investigator team for uh, this uh, excellent attempt at uh, resolving uh, the uncertainty regarding the role of thrombolysis in patients with uh, submassive pulmonary embolism. As you may know, the guidelines give it a class 2B level C recommendation, meaning it's based on expert opinion. And uh, this trial is larger than the entire evidence base uh, of 13 trials that have addressed uh, uh, the space. The trial um, uh, met its primary endpoint, uh, but uh, uh, it was driven by uh, the, uh, the more the less robust component of the composite endpoint, which is the hemodynamic collapse, and uh, at a cost of increased bleeding uh, uh, complication. I would have liked to see a little bit more details about the case fatality rate of uh, hemodynamic collapse and bleeding at seven days and 30 days. By my back of the envelope uh, calculation, it seems like the case fatality rate for hemodynamic collapse was around 25 to 30 percent, which was quite similar to what it was for uh, uh, bleeding. So if you look at it that way, if you balance the benefit risk looking at clinically relevant uh, benefits and clinically relevant harm, it appears to be a wash. Um, the other uh, uh, comment I would like to make is the uh, I will have to see, let's see some more data about uh, treatment by age interaction with regards to efficacy and safety. By, again, by my back of the envelope calculation, 
the interaction term was not significant, not surprising because it's a very, the numbers are very small. But based on uh, evidence external to the trial, um, it, it's been well described that in pa patients over the age of 75 are at increased risk of um, uh, hemorrhagic complications, including intracranial hemorrhage. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to sort of uh, um, limit this therapy in patients with submassive pulmonary embolism who have an acceptable risk of bleeding. The final comment I'd like to ma make is that the tenecteplase is not FDA approved for uh, acute pulmonary embolism. Uh, streptokinase, alteplase, and urokinase are, but retoplase and tenecteplase are off-label. Uh, again, I would like to congratulate you for, for this uh, wonderful attempt. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Call. I have also a question. Do you have any data what happened to ventricular function, right yeah. ventricular function? Did it improve in the treatment group and more so than the control? Yeah. Uh, may I first just address one uh, issue? Um, the um, fat case fatality rate of, of hemodynamic collapse was indeed 30 percent, about 25 uh, percent. The case fatality rate of hemorrhagic strokes was 30 percent, but the case fatality rate of major bleeds was much lower. So it was, this was for the hemorrhagic um, uh, strokes. Um, well, we do, no, we do not have follow-up data on the right ventricular function. This was a study with purely clinical endpoints. We are conducting a two-year follow-up at the moment. It will be ready in about a year from now, year and a half, uh, in which patients will come back for uh, clinical examination plus echo. This will be part of the long-term follow-up of the study, but we did not collect such data at, uh, at uh, 30 days. Okay, I think that'll be the very, very useful information to follow up. All right, our next